Welcome to the Psychology Department Online Awards event for Fall 2021. We're going to begin with some opening remarks by um, John Raskin, our chair, the chair of the Psych Department. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, I hope uh, you're all doing all right tonight. And uh, I'm you know, very pleased to um, see everybody here this evening and it's you know one of the fun events of the semester where we get to celebrate everybody's work and how much um, they've accomplished and all of you as awardees have accomplished an enormous amount and and you know you've accomplished that I, I'm sort of saying the obvious but sometimes the obvious needs to be said right you've accomplished all of the things that you've accomplished under incredibly trying circumstances I mean th this has not been a normal a um, couple of years. It's certainly not been what most of us expected. Um, you know, COVID is the is the gift that keeps on giving. It just seems to go on and on and on. And you've persevered, and not only just persevered through all of this, you've excelled through all of this, right? You've you've done phenomenal things academically, and um, you know, and a lot of times in life, you only realize um, you know what you can do, um, what you can sort of stand up to when you're faced with adversity and all of you have faced incredible adversity the last couple of years and yet um you know achieved an incredible uh, incredible things and and uh, you know hopefully that is something that you will take with you from here as you go on out into the world and accomplish more incredible things and so we're very pleased and um proud to be your professors and we look forward to your continued success and your continued keeping up with us as you go forward into the world and let us know about all those accomplishments. We always like to hear from our alums. And so those are some of my initial thoughts. And I look forward to learning more about each of you as we go through the ceremony this evening. So turn it back over to you, Mary Alice. What we like to do with this award ceremony is really recognize the outstanding students, students who have gone above and beyond. Um, so not only did they do well in their classes, but you know, they've gotten involved outside of the classroom. They've done research. They've um, participated. They've, they're the kind of student who, when they come to your class, that you're really happy to have them there. So I'm going to show the PowerPoint. We have a slide for each student and read the blurb that people use to nominate each of the students. So. The way this award works is every student was nominated by a professor. So our first student is Rachel Barbato. She's our outstanding student. She's getting department honors and a psychology student of excellence award. Rachel has always been a very engaged and inquisitive student. She enriches class discussion with thoughtful and spot on considerations and comments on the reading materials, even during online classes, which made a huge difference for the instructor. Another faculty member said Rachel aced her evolutionary psychology class, showing strong diligence and effort. She is also now completing her honors thesis, addressing ADHD from an evolutionary perspective. Congratulations, Rachel. Tabitha Castro. Tabitha was an incredibly hardworking student who went above and beyond at all turns. She is a natural leader in the classroom community. Congratulations, Tabitha. Jacob Cohen. Jacob is currently doing wonderfully in evolutionary psych and was a star student in statistics. He is a bright, hardworking student who reflects the core values of our department and institution. Tessa Fryer was an excellent student in evolutionary psych class when special tasks related to streaming the lectures due to pandemic conditions emerged, she stepped right up to help. She has an extremely positive classroom presence and is just an all around great student. Sophie Gross. Sophie is a hardworking student who goes the extra mile. She performs at the top of her classes and is a credit to the psychology department. 
Morgan Gunter. Morgan is a student athlete who is a also a stellar psychology student. She is acing all of her classwork and eagerly participates in class. She was a natural leader in the classroom. Erin Crutchoff is a star student. She stepped up to serve at, as the point person for one of our class research projects, and she regularly puts in strong effort in all her work. Further, her contributions to class discussions are always appreciated. Holly Mahan. Holly is an outstanding student in evolutionary psych. She is an incredibly bright and diligent student across contexts. She goes out of her way to take classes that she knows she will find challenging. As her advisor, I have always been impressed with this fact. Brianna McQuaid. Brianna McQuaid is completing her honors thesis, which integrates ideas from evolutionary psychology and the visual arts to deeply examine the topic of evolutionary mismatch. She is also a valued research team member and has successfully aced two of my courses. She works incredibly hard on group projects and always takes on additional work to the benefit of the group. She is an all star. Kyle Powell. Kyle is a very bright and hardworking student in my advanced research class. He is regularly adding positively to our group projects and he has demonstrated that he puts an extraordinary amount of time and effort into all his academic work. James Redonkti. Professors may admit smiling broadly when they recognize certain names on a new roster for an upcoming class. James inspires such a reaction. With a strong foundation in psychology and a keen intellect, he's his committed engagement in class discussion truly enlightened his peers and elevated the academic discourse. There was never, there has never been any topic too difficult or too delicate that strained his capacity for insight, insightful analysis or thoughtful deliberation. Humble, James openly expresses gratitude to students and faculty for enriching his experience at New Pulse for motivating him to thrive academically and for informing his own developing inclination toward a professional path in helping others. We are very pleased that James will be pursuing graduate education in mental health counseling. Aileen Vermillier, one of the best students in challenging classes. She is thoughtful, attentive, and well-organized, and an excellent collaborator in the lab. So congratulations to all of our award winners. And I'm gonna stop sharing this for now. And we'll hear from Glenn. Okay, I really appreciate it. And um, sorry, I can't seem to figure out WebEx on the phone that well, but I really am so proud of all the students and it's such a privilege to be on the awards committee for the department, um, which has its roots going back to about 2008 or 2009, I believe. And this is definitely one of the better parts of, of the job um, is, is celebrating and supporting our students in this way. So. In that spirit, um, I agreed to, uh, to say a few brief words about um, features of successful students. And I realized that a few years back, I wrote something called 10 things your psychology professors want you to know. And to my understanding, the students who we have, um, who we are honoring as students of excellence really match these things and really got these things out of our curriculum. So let me briefly go down this list um, just to give uh, students a sense of, you know, what you all have accomplished during your time here. And it's uh, in David Letterman top 10 fashion, by the way. Um, and if you don't know who David Letterman is, I slightly apologize for that. It's a generational thing. Well, um, number 10, what I've got here is 
students in this program should develop an appreciation of the breadth of content areas that comprise psychology. So any 18 year old that starts a psych major often, not always, but often think that psychology is all about what we would call abnormal psychology or clinical psychology and, and therapy and that kind of stuff. And I think a lot of times students are very surprised to find out that psychology has to do with neuronal transmission in the brain and it has to do with response time in terms of um, cognitive experimental methodology and it has to do with how babies and children perceive um, things like volume of mass and liquids and that kind of thing. And, you know, once you get into it, you find that understanding the science of human psychology is extremely broad and you all at this point certainly have, have developed a strong understanding of that. Um, the next one I have, number nine, is an appreciation of what I call the breadth of applied areas that comprise psychology. So even when you look at the parts of psychology that are designed to really sort of make a positive difference or use scientific psychology to help solve problems, even that is, is quite extensive. Um, so sure, there's therapy and there's clinical psychology and mental health counseling, but there is also school counseling and there is school psychology and there's industrial psychology, organizational psychology, health psychology, um, educational psychology, and this a broad array of um, applied areas related to the behavioral sciences and getting, you know, completing this major successfully, you got a strong sense of that. Um, number eight, what I've got here is, I think this particular one applies deeply to the students being recognized today. The understanding that a good education in psychology is a holistic education. So I always like to tell my students, you know, if, if you want to just like try to get A's in your classes, study hard, do well on your exams and your assignments, that's great. But, you know, you're here for four years and a special, a special time of your life. and why not go the extra mile? And I love to be part of a department where we as a community foster extra um, extracurricular opportunities. So we have the UPA or the Undergrad Psych Association. We have a chapter of Psychi that's been running strong for years. We have tons of research opportunities for students to be able to do research um, either on their own um, in the context of like an honors thesis under guided mentorship or in collaboration as a team. We have internship opportunities and we have events such as this one now and the students that are being recognized today are students who really have gone out of their way to develop and acquire a holistic edu education, which is something we really, we really, when we talk to alumni years from now, that's often the stuff they remember is the bells and whistles, the extra stuff that the students went out of their way to add to their education. Number seven, this is um, the ability to design and implement a scientific study on some question related to behavior. So as you may know by now, your professors love scientific research methods in the behavioral sciences and teaching students about the details of experimental designs and correlational designs and <clears throat> the statistical analyses that go with different methodological designs and scale construction and all of these, these things about how do you really answer an empirical question, you've developed those skills. And, and I know students don't necessarily always see research methods courses as, as a cakewalk. Once you develop an understanding of that stuff, you can really ask and answer questions in a, in a really solid and, um, in, I think, deep and, and important way. Number six, you got a development of the basic understanding of statistics. And that's a really important thing. I will give you quick anecdote, when I got my PhD at University of New Hampshire, Robert Reich was our keynote speaker and he used the word median. And he said something about the median income in the United States. And he looked out to all the graduating students and he said, if you don't know what the word median means, you shouldn't be graduating right now. And of course, a percentage of us laughed. We were the percentage who knew what median meant. Um, but you know, this was, such a nod toward the importance of understanding statistics and how statistics really is. It's not just like medicine within the major. It's something that is a set of skills that you can use to understand all kinds of things throughout life. Number five, realization that humans are strongly connected to other forms of life. So many behavioral scientists 
look at behavior as something that extends beyond humans. Um, classic example is B.F. Skinner, um, renowned Harvard psychologist who literally studied rats and pigeons and sometimes goldfish for his entire storied career. And there's different parts of the curriculum where you learn that behavior is something that extends beyond the human experience. And I think there's something really um, empowering and beautiful about that. Number four, the fact that humans are in, in a lot of ways the same everywhere you go. So you learn about cultural universals, you learn about features of the human experience, like expression of emotion um, and other kinds of things that are just, you know, something that connects people across the globe. And there are so many things about human psychology that connect people across the globe. And in a lot of your different classes, you, you develop an understanding of that. Flip side of that is the understanding that culture influences humans in an enormous way and it influences our behavior in an enormous way, often subtly, often in ways that we don't necessarily pay attention to or think about or realize. And in lots of places in the major, you learn about the influence of culture and it gives you an important appreciation, I think, for different cultures and for, for the fact that, you know, there's lots of ways to do things. Um, even though we're stuck in our own culture and often um, tend to neglect that fact. Um, number two, the understanding that every person is an individual. You know, this point probably comes out most clearly when you learn about personality psychology and when you learn about traits and the big five personality traits and, and things like that. Um, you get an appreciation for the fact that people are not all the same. And that's really important because no matter what field you go into, however you tend to approach the world, you're going to be working with people who might approach the world radically differently from yourself and having an understanding of the psychology of individual differences really prepares people for dealing with that kind of behavioral diversity. Um, and finally, I will end with one that I think has important social ramifications, which is the fact that generally speaking, there's not really such a thing as bad people. What there is, is situations that facilitate asocial or antisocial behavior. This is a little bit of a strong um, statement, but I will say that as someone with a PhD in social psychology, I'm, I'm deeply um, appreciative of the idea of um, the, what they call the power of the situation. So you learned about Zimbardo's research, you learned about Milgram's research, you learned about um, Darley and Latini's research. And going back to so much of that field of psychology, we learn about how when people do good things, it's often because they're in situations that facilitate good things. And when people do bad things, it's often because they're in situations that facilitate those kinds of behaviors. And so this is an important lesson about how can we use our education in psychology and go out there and help make the world a better place. So without without um, taking up any more time in honor of all the graduates, congratulations. You guys are going to go far and we are so proud of you and thank you so much.